Hi, my name is Justin Schelf and I'm the engineering lead at PatchMyPC. In this video, we're going to cover some exciting new features around third-party software updates that were introduced in the 1806 build of Configuration Manager current branch. This video is going to include how we can enable third-party software updates, how we can have Config Manager automatically handle the code signing certificate needed to publish updates, the client setting required to allow clients to trust third-party updates we publish, and how we can add and publish updates using our Patch My PC update catalog. So you will need to ensure that you're running 18.06 or newer. The first step, if you haven't configured this, would be to right-click your site, choose to configure site components, and then choose the software update point. If you're running in a CAS hierarchy, you would want to do this at the top level. If you're in a standalone primary, you would just click on your primary and choose that option. Under the third-party updates tab of your software update point, the first option we need to enable is the third-party software update. If this isn't enabled, the component won't be enabled, so you wouldn't be able to add and publish catalogs in your console node. The next option is to choose how you want to manage the code signing certificate. The easiest option is to go ahead and choose to allow Configuration Manager to manage the certificate. If you chose to manually manage the certificate, you would have to ensure that you create the certificate or import a certificate from SCUP or our publishing tool, and then you would have to manually export the certificate and deploy it to your clients through a GPO to ensure they trust it. If you have Configuration Manager manage it, it's going to automatically create a certificate if it's not already there. It's going to automatically deploy that to your client so they trust it. So this is a great option. Um, in the 1806 release, it also does not require your software update point to be running in HTTPS mode. That was something that the technical previews did require, but that's no longer required. So even if your SUP is not in HTTPS mode, you can still have Configuration Manager manage your certificate now. So I'll go ahead and choose Apply, and then OK. Now, one thing to note here is that if you did want to use a certificate, a code signing certificate from a certificate authority, whether that's internal or maybe a third party, you would need to still use SCUP or our publishing tool to import that certificate uh, because Configuration Manager in the 1806 release does not have the ability to import a PFX certificate for your code signing cert. So if you wanted to do that, you can install our publishing tool and then choose the option to import a PFX file. You could then browse to the certificate that you created through your certificate authority or even a public CA and then uh, add that and then it would ask you for your password and then that would automatically add that into the WSUS code signing certificate store. And if that already exists, Configuration Manager would read that certificate instead of creating a self-signed certificate. So just wanted to make sure that we kind of covered that scenario for those of you who might be using a code signing cert from a certificate authority instead of just creating a self-signed one. So we'll go ahead and choose OK. And then we need to ensure that our client setting, so I'm going to enable this setting under the default client settings. You could, of course, use any custom settings that you have here deployed to your clients. Under the software updates tab, there's a new setting called to enable third party software updates. We're going to choose yes on that option. That's going to set the local group policy to tell the client it's allowed to install any third party updates that we've published to our site. Now, I do want to open the certificate snap-in on the computer, and we're going to browse out to the WSUS folder on our software update point. This is going to be where the code signing certificate gets generated. So we can see that there's currently nothing here. So if we initiate a software update point synchronization, that's going to be how the certificate gets generated if it's not already there. So I'll go ahead and open up my WSync manager, and we should be able to see the uh, sync process happen. Once the sync is completed, it should automatically generate the certificate for us. So if we go up, we can see that we have created the certificate here uh, within the wsyncmanager.log. So if we come back into our certificates and refresh this, we can now see that we have our self-signed certificate that was automatically created from SCCM. So this looks great. If we come back into your console now, and go back to that third party updates tab in our software update point, it should give you some information about the certificate that it generated. So this looks good. It was automatically created and it's going to be automatically deployed to our clients. If you're coming from SCUP or even our publishing tool, or if you used our publishing tool to import a PFX file, it would automatically read any existing certificate that may exist before you enable this option. And it would automatically deploy that to your clients for you. 
uh, if you did already have a certificate in place before you enable this option. So the next thing that we'll look at is our software update catalogs. So we can see that the HP partner catalog is automatically showing up here. So that looks good. The next thing that we'll do is go ahead and add our patch my PC update catalog by clicking add custom catalog here. So the first catalog I'm gonna add is the trial catalog. In case you just wanted to test this out, you can use the trial catalog URL and we'll also include this in the description below. So I just pasted in that and I'll go ahead and fill in the catalog metadata. All right, so I put in the metadata. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next to add the catalog and then choose next here on the summary and then it's gonna go ahead and add that for me. So after we add it, we do need to right click and choose to subscribe. We're gonna go next through the general tab it's gonna go ahead and download the trial catalog for us. The next thing you do need to click the certificate and approve it. So we can see that the certificate, our catalog is signed from Patch My PC code signing certificate. So we're gonna choose okay now that we viewed it and then click we accept and understand that we trust this certificate. We're gonna do next here and then next here. So that looks good. Now the trial catalog is intended as a proof of concept and it doesn't contain all the updates, but it does contain, contain a subset so you can understand how the publishing works and go ahead and test it out on some clients. So the next thing that's gonna happen here, there's going to be a log file called uh, the SMS ISV update sync agent.log. You can find this in your configuration manager logs folder. So if we go ahead and open that log file, we can see that the catalog, so if we come up here and look at this log file, we can see that it went ahead and downloaded our catalog. So here we go, we can see it downloading the cab. It verified that it was trusted because we added the certificate, and then it's gonna automatically publish these updates for us. So after the initial publishing that you verify in this log file, we can go ahead and right click our software update point and choose to synchronize software updates. So then if we go over to our WSync manager, we're gonna just verify once this completes, we then need to go ahead and enable our vendor and product in our software update point for Patch My PC. All right, so we can now see the sync is complete. So if we come back to our software update point, the initial time that you publish updates, you will have to come in and go to your products tab. And we wanna enable the Patch My PC product. And then the, the product name is gonna be called Scup Updates under the Patch My PC vendor. So we'll go ahead and choose okay on that and we'll run one more software update point sync, and this is when the third-party update should start showing up in our console. All right, so our software update point just synchronized, and now we can see that the third-party updates are now flowing into our console now that we enabled the product. So if I refresh the all software updates, now we can see our third-party updates showing up here. So the next thing I'm gonna show you, instead of the trial catalog, I'm gonna show you how we can add a catalog but filter by product. So since Configuration Manager does not have the ability to filter catalogs, it will just automatically publish everything in a catalog for all updates. What we did on our engineering side is we gave the ability where you can append additional parameters to your catalog URL if you only wanna import specific third-party updates into your site using the SCCM publishing. So uh, we do, I'll include a link to this blog post, but we basically list all the products we support and then you could import specific products if you didn't wanna have all the updates published to your site. So if we jump over to one of our uh, sites that have all our updates published, you can see we have about 241 unique updates that would get published in our uh, products that are about 130 different products. So this would also include like 32 and 64 bit updates. That's why we see that update number a bit larger. So if you didn't wanna have all those updates published, what we can do is selectively import by product. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose to add a custom catalog again. I'm gonna paste in my catalog URL, and we can see that I've now appended the product equals Oracle Java. So if I took this away, it would publish all the updates in the catalog if I just had the ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in just Oracle Java for the product. All right, so I filled in the metadata. So we're gonna go ahead and choose next here, and then next here. Now we can see we have our Java catalog, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose subscribe. Choose next through the wizard, it's gonna download. We're gonna to have to accept the certificate again, so we can see it's the same certificate. Accept that and then uh, choose next here. So if we go back to our ISV update, here in a minute we should see that catalog start downloading and publishing automatically. All right, so we can now see we have 12 new updates that were published. 
we can see all these different Java updates that came in through our catalog here. So this looks good. So if we come back to our console, we can see that we don't have any updates now, but if we go ahead and run one more software update point sync and monitor that sync, we should see the update starting to flow in here in a second. All right, so we can see the sync completed and now we can see we have the different Java updates automatically coming in. So if we go ahead and refresh, we can see we went from 12 updates and now we're up to 18 and we can now see all our Java updates showing up here. So this looks great. Now, of course, if you just wanna go ahead and publish all the updates in the catalog, we'll come back to our software update catalogs. All right, so I filled in all of the metadata here. We can see we've got our catalog with no parameters. So that's gonna download and import all the updates. We'll go ahead and choose next here and then next here. So we'll go ahead and wait for that to publish. Hi, uh, you know what? It looks like I forgot to subscribe. So we're gonna go ahead and go through that process to subscribe to the catalog, view the certificate, accept it, and then go next here and then next here. Now that we're subscribed, we should see it now start publishing updates uh, automatically here. All right, so we can now see in the SMS ISV update sync agent component, it's automatically publishing the updates from our catalog using metadata only. So it's going through the whole list of our catalog and getting those updates published. So this is looking really good. Now I do wanna mention the ISV update component sync will automatically synchronize your catalog after you add it every 24 hours. So we generally do about three to four catalog updates a week. As long as an update is released before about 10 a.m. Mountain Time, we get it in the same day's catalog update. So this uh, sync component will automatically handle publishing any new updates that we release to our catalog through this sync. All right, so we can now see all those third-party updates were published. So I'm gonna come back into my software update point and choose to synchronize. This is then gonna pull in all those published updates and then they're gonna be available on our console. So we'll wait for WSync Manager to go ahead and synchronize and we'll come back to the video. All right, so it looks like our software update point is now synced. It looks like it uh, is successful here. So we can see all those updates uh, came in and started synchronizing to our catalog. So we come back in here and go ahead and refresh. We can see we now have 238 updates that are published from our catalog within our console. Now, one thing to note, the configuration manager publishing will always publish updates initially with metadata only. What that means is if we came in here and right click this update and look at the content tab, there's not gonna be any content information because the update hasn't been downloaded and published and code signed from your certificate because it's just metadata only. So this would be helpful. It's gonna give you scanned statistics, but you wouldn't actually be able to deploy this update until you come back and publish it with full content. So in order to do that, we'll go ahead and we'll choose Java for instance. So if we come here and right click on Java, choose uh, right click and choose publish third party update content. What that's gonna do is if we come back and look at our ISV component, it's gonna go ahead and tell the catalog to download the binary and then publish it. So we'll wait for that to complete. All right, so that only took a moment or two. Uh, we can see that it downloaded the update and then published the update and code signed it and it's now complete. So that means the update was published from the SMS ISV update component with full content. So in order for that to show up in our console, if we come in and do one more software update point sync, we will then see that the update is showing up as available. All right, so that sync is now complete. So if we come back in here and search for Java again, we can now see that the update is showing up green. So that means it's published with full content. And if we come look at the content, we can now see that we could download and deploy that update into an update package in a software update group. So this looks good. Now this is the one key difference in the 1806 release of the publishing feature compared to our automated publishing service. Now, if you wanted to use our automated publishing service, the automated publishing service would basically allow you to come in, select all the different products individually. So if we come in here and look for Java, for example, we have the ability in the publishing tool to automatically publish with full content during the first publishing operation. So we could come in here and basically enable the products and it would automatically download and publish updates similar to the way the config manager ISV update component does it, but it would just be our publishing tool running in the background. 
So you could come in here, you could change all updates to metadata only, or we could publish updates with full content initially that you enable. So when you're thinking about the console versus our publishing tool, there is one thing to note with the current release of 1806, you do have to, after your updates are auto published, it's only gonna be with metadata only for any new updates. You would then have to right click the update and choose to publish the content before you would actually be able to deploy that update. Now we have talked with David James as well as some of the people from the product group. They are looking to enhance this feature where you might be able to initially, when you import the catalog, to also publish the updates within that catalog with full content. So that will hopefully be coming in a future release, but if you're looking to fully automate things, you're probably gonna be better using our publishing service initially because we can publish with full content and you wouldn't have to do the manual step. So to actually deploy updates, it's really no different. Uh, what we'll actually be showing you in this demo is an ADR. So we're gonna be using an automatic deployment rule. Within our automatic deployment rule, we can see that we're just looking where the vendor is patch my PC. So all our updates will be under the vendor patch my PC. I am doing a title filter for migration just so I don't include any of the migration updates to auto deploy. So that would include things like migrating Firefox to Firefox ESR or migrating Java 6 and Java 7 to Java 8, for example. Within those updates, there's always gonna be migration in the title. That's why I did the exclude there. So if we click on preview, you can notice that we only see the one update. That's because it's the update that we published with full content. If the updates are just metadata only and you didn't go back in and right click that update, they're not gonna automatically deploy. So what I'll notice here is that ADR automatically ran when we synchronized our software update point after we published the update with full content. So we can see that this update group is automatically being deployed and it's automatically got that Java update. Now you could of course come into your all software updates if you wanted to manually create your groups and you could use things like search criteria. So I could come in here and say, hey, let's search for Java or let's search for required updates. And then you could certainly right click and create your update group and deploy it that way. So it's really going to be the same exact process as how you would be deploying Microsoft updates. So on the client side, what we're gonna do is go ahead and do a policy check-in so it sees the new updates and it will also automatically get the certificate that was created and enable the third-party policy for installing updates that we enabled in the client settings. All right, so I verified the policy has downloaded. So what that's gonna do if we open up a certificate snap-in and a local group policy snap-in on the machine, we can see under the trusted root certificate authorities, we now have our WSUS self-signed certificate automatically added it automatically gets added to the trusted publishers as well. Within the local uh, computer policy under the administrative templates, Windows components, and then the Windows update, we can also verify that the Config Manager client also enabled the option to allow signed updates from Internet Microsoft Update Service location. So that's gonna allow the clients to trust it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a software update scan cycle. Uh, so it starts evaluating that update group that was automatically deployed through our ADR. We can see that in, our, in my ADR, I had the deployment set to show notifications. So if I go ahead and open up Software Center and look at the updates tab, I can now see Java showing up. It should already be trusted from our certificate perspective and a group policy perspective using configuration manager settings. So we should be able to go ahead and choose install. So let me just open up control panel. Hopefully I get this in time. There we go. So we had 171 installed actually. So this will go through the process of doing the upgrade. So we can now see that it's starting to do the upgrade here and we should see 181 show up any second now. All right, so we can now see that Java has been upgraded to 181. So that's basically how the setup would work. Once these state messages get sent up and your summarization task run, we can now see that we're reporting compliant on that one machine that installed the update. Now, one thing to note, it does use existing infrastructure. So the update package is gonna go out to your DPs for all your third-party updates. And your client is just gonna use the existing SCCM agent. So you don't have to worry about any additional clients or server infrastructure because we're gonna be making use of what's already there today in your configuration manager hierarchy. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.